Hey YouTubers, it's Platt, and today we're going to do the last video in our series on corn mash. Uh, just a little summation. Um, I showed you the original video I did back when I first started this channel on something I called a corn mash, a one truly corn mash. Um, then the second video is corn mash revisited, where I went over where I was wrong there and talked about the three basic ways we can do a corn mash. The first one was the uh, using corn syrup which had already had the starches from the corn turn into a workable sugar for us and turn into a, a form of a liquid you know, a syrup that we could use. That was the simplest way to do a corn mash or a corn based spirit. You know. Uh, next we took corn meal or you could use flake corn, any kind of crushed corn, and we added enzymes that would help convert those starches into sugar. And today we're going to do the, I guess, traditional method or the old school way in a sense. The way they did it back, the, the settlers in Appalachia and the original distillers in Kentucky, the way they would have done it before the science of enzymes was kind of out there. And the way we're going to do it is just real simple. We're going to take, I have some sweet corn seeds. Um, you could also use any kind of food grade corn seed. Uh, if you have, if you're a hunter, some people have corn seed, they, they feed deer feed. Um, you could also use popcorn if you like. Now I advise, if you're using anything else but corn specifically for seed, be careful uh, with popcorn. You could have all kinds of crazy flavorings and stuff. You would definitely not want to buy something with all that flavoring on there. Uh, you would just want to buy regular unflavored popcorn. Um, any kind of you know, uh, deer feed or stuff like that might have other things or other, you know, treatments or whatever. Be sure to wash all that up. But we're just going to take simple corn seed. And what we're going to try to do is get this to sprout. Um, when seed germinates, and this is not just for corn. This is also for barley, rye. This is a myth that they used a long time ago to prepare the uh, grain to give us something that we could turn into something formidable. We're just going to take the corn and we're going to want to get it to germinate. And it's in that germination process that the internal uh, workings of that seed get different enzymes working, converting starches into sugar, something for that young budding corn plant to have nutrients to grow. Well, we're going to try to get start the germination process. So all we're going to do is take our corn and we're going to dump it into a little container. And you could probably tell by looking at this corn when you get to it that it's awfully dry. And uh, the, the seeds are kind of dormant. There's, that's why there's no uh, activity. And we're just going to take we just got a little bit of corn and we're just going to soak it in water. We want to make sure we have enough water to cover the seeds. And we're going to let this soak overnight and then we'll come back and drain off some of the water but still keep it damp and protect, prepare it. But the first way to get the germination started is to get these seeds soaked. And the same thing, like I said, if you're doing with popcorn or whatever. So we're going to soak this overnight, and then we're going to come back, and I'll show you how we'll continue prepping or encouraging the seed to germinate. Okay, so we let our seeds soak in water overnight, and then uh, I've come back and drained them. And I'm just taking this little napkin here, as you can see, and covered up my seeds, kept it damp. And we're just going to wait the next couple of days, make sure to keep this damp, we'll add a little bit of water every day. And in that period of time, the seeds should start to germinate. Um, you don't have to put this in any light or whatever, uh, actually it almost works better with no lights. Uh, if you've ever done something like uh, growing microgreens, this is something similar to that approach. So we're going to keep this moist for the next couple of days, and here in about a day or so, we should start getting some sprouts. So it's been a couple of days now, and you can see we're starting to get some sprouts on our corn seed. And we've been sure to keep it damp, you can tell by the napkin there. And we're just going to let this sit 
overnight, uh, maybe for another day or so, and see if we can get the rest of those seeds to sprout. And then we'll come back and uh, dry them off and then uh, review uh, the process of where we go from here. Okay, so it's been about a uh, day and a half, two days since we've drained off our excess water and we put our little damp napkin to cover. And you can see we've got a good majority of our corn now has sprouted. We've got little centimeter or so long little uh, sprouts coming out of the corn. It's at this point we're going to stop the germination because we don't want all those starches and, and the uh, potential sugars to be used up. Uh, by the uh, budding corn plant. So if this was barley or rye at this point we'd take it kind of spread it out and we would toast it maybe like uh, in your oven um, with barley like you use for beers we could do a light toast and that'd give you something like a crystal malt or like a darker toast would give you the chocolate or black patent malts but with corn we're not necessarily wanting to do this. Uh, if we were an old moonshiner we would just kind of lay this out and let it dry out. Uh, out here in Vegas I could just lay this out and just due to the dry climate it would dry out within a day or so. A little trick we're going to use and if you were doing a smaller you know couple of pounds or whatever you could take this and throw this into a hop bag or, or like a small burlap sack and then throw this in your dryer and what that would do, it would break off these little um, sprouts off the end and it would dry out the corn. Um, if you wanted to, like I said, you could, uh, maybe if you had a dehumidifier, maybe use, or one of those like dehumidifier trays you would use for like uh, drying out fruit or beef jerky, maybe you could use that also. We're just going to throw this in a little sock or a little hot bag and then throw it in the dryer and dry it out. And we'll come back and review how you would finish out the process of uh, mashing, uh, doing a corn mash the traditional method. Okay, so we went ahead and dried out our corn uh, using our using our drying machine. Uh, the reason I one of the reasons I use that is it kind of replicates how they would do this at a commercial malting house or uh, distillery or even a brewery that uses corn if, if they did their own ma uh, malting of grains. Um, they use a giant tumbler and what that does and what the effect we got off our dryer was it broke off a lot of those small sprouts or roots that came out of the corn seed and it also dried out the corn. Um, and we got the same effect using our dryer. Um, after that's all done and we've got the corn dry and the sprouts broke off, now we'll be ready to crush the grains. Um, you could, for smaller batches, pounds or two or whatever, use a regular home blender. Now let me give you a warning. You want to use a blender with a glass pitcher and you want to use something kind of heavy duty or industrial strength. Your little cheap blenders with the plastic pitchers will not do. Uh, corn is very hard and it could crack or break your blender. It could crack or break, you know, the cheap metal blades in some of these um, lower grade uh, blenders. So you want, bird will tell you, you want to be sure to use, like I said, a heavy duty blender if you're going to use a blender with a glass pitcher or, or you want to use a grain grinder. Don't try to use a meat grinder either. I've, I've read for some people have tried that and again, the, the metal that's used for meat grinders are a little softer metal and corn will, again, break the teeth or, or can break those grinders. So just remember you're dealing with a very hard kernel in that dried out corn. And uh, anyway, once you get that crushed, now it becomes flake corn or like corn meal, and you're ready to brew. And you would use it, because we've activated those enzymes in there, you would use it like you would any regular grain. If you've done home brewing, as the bird will tell you, you would uh, do a mash in, you know, around 150, 155 degrees, heat up the water, let it rest for anywhere 30 minutes to an hour, and then now you're ready to finish your brew or, you know, get, get ready to you know, create your fermented product. And uh, there you have corn, you know, then you'll be able to make your corn whiskey. Um, quick little side note on, on two things. I don't know if I mentioned in an earlier part of the uh, video series, uh, some brew shops will have corn, malted corn or corn sugars to work with. So again, you don't necessarily have to go through this process if you don't want to. If you feel like this is a challenge, great. Hopefully I've uh, taught you a thing or two about doing this on your own. 
Uh, also, if you're going to, if you're not wanting to make 100% corn mash, you're wanting to make something more like a bourbon mash where you're predominantly corn, but you have other grains like barley or rye, what have you. When using those, you don't necessarily have to use enzymes. The barley and rye have excess of enzymes. They have enough enzymes to convert all their starches into sugar and have some left over. And so if you're doing a bourbon malt or bourbon mash, you can just use the excess enzymes from barley to, to uh, work on the corn. So if you're doing, like I said, a bourbon mash, it's, you know, let's say something like 60% corn and 40% barley per se. That barley can do the lifting on both grains for you. So you don't have to do you know, enzyme addition there. Just something uh, to think about or make your life easier if you were going to go ahead and do a bourbon mash compared to a straight corn mash. Well, I hope you like this video. More importantly, I hope you like the video series. Hopefully I've taught you a little bit about uh, corn, making a corn mash and hopefully I corrected that original video. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, anything you're not clear about, please leave it in the comment section or you can always leave, send me a message on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.